بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد in affirmation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the Almighty's greatness and his توحيد his oneness his right to be worshipped alone his right uh, his divine names and attributes his perfect divine names and attributes that his creation does not share in and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rububiyya or his lordship that he is the sole creator of the heavens and earth I would like to go over some of the explanation one of the tafsirs of the beginning of Surah Ali Imran where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem after a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alif lam Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum nazzala alayka al-kitab بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه وأنزل التوراة والإنجيل من قبل هدى للناس وأنزل فرقان إن الذين كفروا بآيات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو الانتقام إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء والذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this beautiful verse سبحانه he says ألف لام these letters are of one of the miracles of the Quran and none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their meaning. Allah, la ilaha illa huwa, none has the right to be worshipped by him. Al-Hayyu al-Qayyum, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. It is he who has sent down the book to you with truth, confirming what came before it. And he sent down the Torah, and the Injil, the Gospel, aforetime as a guidance to mankind, and he sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong, which is this Quran. Truly those who disbelieve in the verses, or the ayahs, the evidences, and the signs of Allah, for them there is a severe torment, and Allah is almighty, all able of retribution. Truly nothing is hidden from Allah, in the earth or in the heavens. He it is who shapes you in the womb as he wills. There is none has the right to be worshipped but him, the Almighty, the All Wise. In this beautiful verse in Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Shaykh uh, uh, Imam Sa'di mentions in his tafsir, he said that the beginning of Ali Imran, similar to Baqarah, that the first ayats that are contained in it, they are a a debate. They're debating and and an argument against the Christians and the Jews. To and they are negating their madhab, their way. Their, ide- their their understanding and their propagation and it is a, a, a dawa or propagation for them to enter into the religion of the truth which is Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this verse the Almighty by giving us news of his uluhiya of his right to be worshipped alone and that he is the only one worthy.
worthy of worship, and there is nothing worthy of worship except Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And that it is also an obligation upon us as created beings to free ourselves and remove ourselves far in every way in which it's possible to remove ourselves from false worship. Because any worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on falsehood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the truth. He is the only worthy, the only one worthy of worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from his lordship, and from some of the great characteristics, divine and perfect characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses, is that he is the ever-living. And his uh, his 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 perfection and his qayyum that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of his creation he is not in need of his creation but in fact we are in need in totality and we depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even those who reject him subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are from his divine names and attributes that he subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses and his perfection and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and those other attributes which are related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's char divine characteristic of al hay of, of being the ever-living, is that it also affirms that Allah is the all-hearing and the all-seeing, and that His, His power and His greatness is perfect is, 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 and without any boundaries. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. And He is the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these attributes are related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being Al-Qayyum. And this attribute also is a verification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's independence from His creation. That His creation is completely dependent upon Him. And this attribute also shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things. And that He is the one who is the planner of His creation. And that He is the one who planned us as created beings in our body. He's the one who created us and created our bodies and gave us the ability to do the things we're able to do. And he created our hearts. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala created our souls, which will return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah the Almighty, out of his mercy and his, his, his perfection, he Reveal to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-kitab, meaning the Qur'an, which is the greatest of the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to his creation. And, it, and what is contained in the Qur'an is all truth. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do, everything he explained for us in the Qur'an and the stories that he gave us in there are all true. And his commands and his prohibitions are also true and should be followed and obeyed. And from his wisdom is that he is the most just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and this is his, from his divine wisdom. And that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right and is the only one worthy of worship and has the right to be worshipped. This is also a part of, uh, of what all of these divine attributes 
and all of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and done for us out of his divine wisdom, that he has the right, it affirms his right to be worshipped, that all ibadah, all worship goes to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ That the Qur'an, it verifies what was revealed before, meaning the, the gospel and the, uh, the, the, Torah, the Torah, which was revealed to Moses, and the, the books of, uh, the, the, to Moses, and the Injil, which was to Jesus, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, that the Qur'an verifies this, and that whoever rejects the Qur'an and disbelieves in the Qur'an is upon misguidance. And that that misguidance means that they don't truly believe even in the books that were revealed to them, to the people before them, meaning the Jews and the Christians from before who were in the time of Jesus and the time of Moses, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, that the, the books that were revealed to them, that if a person today rejects the Quran, in fact they are rejecting what was revealed to the people before. So in fact they have made, they have disbelieved in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed because the Quran verifies what was revealed before. And where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ That verily those who disbelieve in the verses of Allah, meaning the signs, the Quran, and all of the different evidences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put forth and given to us throughout His creation, the signs, even in His, his creation, those ayats and verses which we see in the beauty of His creation, the fact that the woman goes through stages, uh, the stages of birth, the fact that uh, the stage of growth that human beings have, that all of these are signs from Allah, the, the sun and the moon and the stars. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرُ لَا تَسْجِدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمْرِ وَاسْجِدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ That from his signs, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ is the night and the day. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرِ And the sun and the moon. لَا تَسْجِدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ And do not prostrate to the shams. Do not prostrate to the, the sun or even the moon, but rather make your prostration, your worship to Allah. This is advice to the fire worshippers and any and the witches and all the people who involve themselves in sorcery and false worship, those people who believe in anthropomor uh, anthropomorphic beliefs and those people who believe in have belief in animism and they believe that the trees and the created things are worthy of worship. But Allah makes ibtal of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes ibtal of, of, of all of this false worship. That nothing has the right to be worship of Him except Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that His signs are for reflecting upon and for coming back to the Quran, going back to the, to the verses of the Quran, which substantiates and which uh, verifies for us what came before, what was revealed to the prophets alayhim afal salatu wa salam from before. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huwa alladhi yusawrakum fil arham kayfa yasha that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates you and fasten, and fasten you in the wombs of your mothers in a manner uh, as he pleased, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hikmah, how we were created. Some of us are black, some of us are brown, some of us are white, some of us are uh, yellow. We're of all different, uh, different colors and different races and different nationalities. And this is from the hikmah and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he created us so that we would get to know one another. So what is not befitting of us as cre created beings to have arrogance 
and think that, that we're better than others because of our race, because of our nationalities. This one says that he's better because he's black. This one says that he is better because he's white. This one says, I don't marry from these people because they are like this. And this one says, I don't marry from these people because they're like that, because they're beneath me, because I believe they're all like this. If that isn't arrogance and ignorance, then I don't know what is. And everything in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam makes, uh, falsifies that evil and arrogant argument. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْذِرُ لَا يَنْذِرُ إِلَى الْأَجْسَادِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَى صُوَرَكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْذِرُ إِلَى الْقُلُوبُكُمْ وَأَعْمَالَكُمْ That Allah does not look to your, your shapes and the way you were, your, 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 what you perceive as your beauty, your looks. But verily, He looks to your heart and your deeds. This is a lesson for us as the believers. And these were just some of the benefits that we gained from the Alama, Imam, al Sa'di in his tafsir, and some of the other benefits that we can reflect upon from the Quran and the Sunnah related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right to be worshipped and his divine names and attributes that we affirm, we affirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes as he affirmed them in the Qur'an and as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed them in the authentic sunnah and we do not distort them, we do not make a new explanation of them but rather we stop with the Qur'an and the sunnah stop and the salaf al-salih, where did the salaf stop? we don't make ta'wil, we don't uh, distort the meanings and we don't uh, change the meanings and we don't try to explain away the meanings, and we don't negate the meanings, but rather we affirm as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed it for us in Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also as Muslims, we must refrain from this arrogance and this racism because it destroys the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it destroys your heart. You will never have success, absolutely when you hate your brother, despise your brother, are arrogant to your brother, and uh, are racist towards your brothers and sisters. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and bless the Muslims to come back to their prestigious place in, in this life, as well as the hereafter. And may Allah forgive us for all of our sins, and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything that I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.